This is a budget for the here and now, and it's a budget for the decades to come. It's a responsible budget that helps people under pressure today and invests in the promise and potential of the more prosperous future that we can make together. Our main priorities are helping with the cost of living, building more homes for Australians, investing in a future made in Australia and the skills and universities we'll need to make it a reality, strengthening Medicare and the care economy, and responsible economic management, which is set to produce another surplus and help fight inflation. Our new tax cuts for Middle Australia are the biggest part of the cost of living relief in this budget. From July 1, all 13.6 million taxpayers will get a tax cut. And for 84 per cent of taxpayers and 90 per cent of taxpaying women, a bigger tax cut than they would have under the previous government. This is about rewarding the hard work of our nurses and teachers and truckies and tradies and the 2.9 million people earning $45,000 a year or less who would have received nothing. The average benefit is $1,888 a year, which is $36 a week. Our tax cuts are better for families and communities, women and young people. They are better for business and they are better for the economy. Speaker, in 2022, Russia's invasion of Ukraine triggered the biggest shock to global energy prices since the 1970s. We know Australian families and businesses have felt this pain, and that's why we've stepped in to help. Electricity prices would have risen 15 per cent in the last year if not for our efforts. Instead, they rose an average of 2 per cent. And tonight, I assure Australians that more help is on the way. This budget delivers $3.5 billion in new energy bill relief yeah. for everyone. Just as every Australian taxpayer will get a tax cut, every Australian household will get energy price relief. Yeah. From July 1, Australians will receive an energy rebate of $300, and one million small businesses will get a little bit more. The ABS has shown how cutting energy bills directly cuts inflation too keeping the lights on for families and businesses and keeping downward pressure on inflation. Mr Speaker, going to university can be a life-changing opportunity. For 35 years now, our student loan system has supported millions of people who study hard to chase their dream. But spikes in inflation have exposed a flaw in this system and put young people under unfair pressure. We are fixing that and we're changing that so that it won't happen again. We're capping indexation of student loans to either the consumer price index or the wage price index, whichever is lower. And backdating it to the middle of 2023 will cut indexation from last year in half. It will wipe $3 billion in student debt for over 3 million Australians and save the average person around $1,200. Yeah. Violence against women is a national shame and it requires our national action. We're delivering $925 million to establish the Permanent Leaving Violence Program, which takes our total investment to address violence against women to $3.4 billion. But we know that there is more work for all of us to do. And we are very proud, Mr Speaker, that this budget extends superannuation to parents on paid leave. Yeah. When it comes to these first months of your child's life, you can't put a price on being there and you shouldn't pay a price for being there. That's why we've provided $1.1 billion to pay super on government funded parental leave. Yeah. This will make the super system fairer, it will reduce the gender gap and it will be benefit 180,000 families a year. And we're providing another $56 million to improve access to women's health services and $19 million to support carers to better choose how and when they work.